Welcome to Wolf Dan's Dogs in the Den, your weekly insight into the fastest sport on four legs, where we have our series heads on because it is Origin Week. And we've been selected to take part in Origin, and we don't take that lightly. It's a privilege, and we know you don't get too many chances at Origin. One, maybe two, so we have to be at our very best this week if we want to get called back for future Origin series. <laughs> so, mate, how are you? Very well, RI. Uh, looking forward to this week. It's a huge week of racing up at Albion Park, and uh, can't wait to dig into this Origin night. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I personally think it's the best night of racing of the year. Some might disagree, but... I'd have to agree um, with you. Yeah, it looks, it looks, it looks great. Yeah, it looks great. And uh, I just want to make special mention to this shirt I'm wearing. So I'm on Team Maroons this week. I've placed myself on there. I'm sure New South Wales don't really care about losing me. <laughs> I bought this about 25 years ago. It's Paul Vorton's Origin jersey from the 1988 series. It's even got that old bicentennial badge there. Uh, back when Origin was at, at its absolute best... Um, I bought it when I was 18. I think I, I think I had $400 in the whole world. I decided to buy this at a charity auction. Okay. Probably could have spent the money on something much better anyway. I finally got used to having wearing it today. I love wearing it um, and I'll be wearing it at our live stream on Thursday night. We're going to talk about that later. I Enough. wonder if Queensland will um, op- like have open arms to receive RI. I'm not, I'm not too sure I like being on one. a winning team. I, I want, I want that's, to that's fair enough. lock in with uh, Billy Slater and all the rest of those legends. So, yeah. And anyway. Ben Hannett. Ben Hannon, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if they accept me. But let's get into today's show, the show rundown. So we'll get your Thursday set. Have a little bit of a chat about your accountability. Then we're going to review the finals from last week. There was three races that we're going to have a look at: the Dashing Corsair, the Cindy's Magic, and also the Flying Amy. Great races, interesting results all around there. Then we're going to have a good look into the Origin Night. So we'll be looking at the Origin Distance, the Origin Sprint, and the Origin Match Race. Um, and that'll that'll just about be the show. So. Why don't we get into it? Just quickly, your Thursday set last week, accountability time, disappointing, zero from two. What was interesting, though, is you both of your tips affirmed enormously. One was $3 to $1.85. The other one was $6.50 into $2.15. Yes. And it sucks not to back a winner, but if you keep tipping as dogs at that price, at those prices and those fluctuations, I think we're all going to end up doing pretty well out of it. Um the less we can talk about that, the better, RI. I'm looking forward to a fresh just, week. Just want to brush by it. Obviously, we, we keep accountable, but we need, to, we need to move forward. You take it pretty hard when you don't back a winner, don't, don't you? don't like it. I'm so like yeah. grinding my teeth thinking I'm about so it. I'm so used to backing winners for so, backing losers for so many years. That <laughs> I just, I just yeah. part of every day. But it's good. And I think people appreciate that you take it to heart so much because it's what you're here for is to try and tip a winner and make their betting experience more enjoyable. Um, all right, well, let's, let's move past that and let's go and get your Thursday set, which I believe is all at Albion Park. Well, as I said last week, um, the races are going to heat up there and we've got to get a, a few more form lines to work with and uh, I'm confident we can just completely have a fill up there at Albion Park. Ooh. So I've got three tips. We're looking Seeing to bounce them like back. beach balls is what I heard you say in pre-production. Well, hopefully. It, they, they look pretty straightforward. Okay. So um, it's always like concerning when they look – well, they look straightforward last week. <laughs> we went none from two. So anyway, we'll go to race one. We've got to kick it off at the top of the program. Number one, Royal Voltage. Uh, he's been a pillar of consistency since stepping up to the 520 metres placing in all five runs. I think he gets his chance here to break through um, with an excellent draw and map. He should be able to find the lead quite comfortably. Um, and the only dog in this race that would probably run him down is Cash Cloud, but uh, she hits a bit of a flat spot entering that catching pen. So I think she might get in a bit of trouble. Uh, we're going to go to the Origin Distance Race. Mm. This might um, divide a few people, um, but I'm going to go with number four here, Palawa King. Um, no. Yeah, so, I'm not sweet with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm Team Queens and Team Valpolicella. Anyway, you've well, got to do what you got to do. Yes, we have to just tip winners. So money aside, or emotions aside, yeah. money's the thing that counts. So I think she, uh, I think sorry, he enters this race uh, on the fresh side. He's been kept over the the um, sprint distances of late, over the 500 and the middle distance 600. He was a good winner at Richmond last week. Um, he'll appreciate rising back up to his um, pet distance, the staying mm-hmm. trip. Maps ideally here. There's three speed runners drawn underneath him. I think he'll be able to flop out, find the rails. And I think the favourite, uh, Val Policella, um, she has a bit of a tricky map to overcome of a fast beginner right outside her. So we'll definitely touch base on that race in a bit more depth uh, later in the program. And got to go to the Origin match race. Mm. Uh, got to go for the Queensland this year, so be happy with that one, RI. Uh, race nine, number three, J is J. Uh, Queensland's best sprinter returns from a three-month hiatus. Uh, tried very well in preparation for this race. Not sure how well McKenna's going currently. She's been a bit disappointed in the last two runs. 
Um, and I was a bit concerned of her trial the other night. She missed the start and she just won't be able to get away with that against Jay's Jay, who is unbeaten mm -hmm. in match race format and um, he owns a track record he here. He won so. it last year, didn't he? Correct. Yeah, so, so we, we'll talk a, a bit more at length about it too later on when we do the review, uh, preview of it as well. Correct. But there's a Thursday set. Fantastic. Yes. All right, let's keep moving. So it was Champions Night last Thursday night at... Alpine Park, and it threw up a really good night's racing. And the first race we're going to look at is the Dashing Corsair, 710 metre race, and we're looking for Fast Milkman at any old price yes, out of the price. white. Here we go. Well, all eyes were on Queensland Wonder Stay of Valpolicella once again, um, who actually does begin best here from box five, but Cushy Bock in box four is able to get underneath Mapunga Loaf, the Victorian box seven, and lead this race up. The winner here, Fast Milkman, box three, gets underneath all of them and, and eventually um, joins the lead with Kushti Bok heading out of the uh, post. We see Val Policella gets in a bit more trouble here, the number five, fifty chance, and kind of gets pushed out of the, just here, gets a bit more in, interference. and yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah, she was um, she found a really prominent position there, but she just wasn't able to accelerate underneath Mapunga Loaf, whether she didn't want to or she just couldn't. Um, she got in a bit of uh, trouble there with Midnight Bandit in box one and... Uh, eventually, you look back up at the the television after watching her, and you got Fast Milkman and Kushti Bok five lengths in front. Mm. Um, Fast Milkman holds on the win in forty two fifty one, probably one of the slower times we've seen there all year. But he's a Group Three winner, and Mapungalo flashes home for second. Fifty to one, if you don't mind as well. So yeah, hopefully someone backed him out and there. And Valpolicella, are you worried about that run that she had? She just didn't look like she was that keen to race, that keen to chase, or is that not a fair assessment by me? Ah. Uh, been worried about her for the last couple of weeks, to mm -hmm. be completely honest. I sort of aired my concerns last week heading into that race. Thought mm -hmm. she was rock bottom. Didn't have the, the balls to, to take her on. Sort of went Kushti Bok, who ran a nice third, I guess. Um, but yeah, she just seems to be running off under pressure. And that's just something you can't get away with at a, in a fifth grade at Warhope, let alone a, a group race at Albion Park over the staying distance. So um, she's got to have her work cut out for her on Thursday night. Mm, be interesting. All right, let's move to the Cindy's Magic. Group two, 600 metres. And we are looking for Phase Magic. Yes. Out of the white. Yeah, well, uh, big news going into this race. Hector Forley being a, a late scratching on the day before. Um, and Plum Tucker, the reserve rug, she gets into box one and makes full use of it after an even beginning. She scoots underneath everything and leads the race up in really quick fashion. You've got Tagavai lower there in box two. Um, he gets in the second. And One Hot Bandit looms ominously in the yellow rug here. Um, Phase Magic, the eventual winner of the race. She is currently in fourth mm. place there in the white rug. Um, but yeah, Plum Tucker, really quick sections. 963 early, 2154 down the back. Uh, but yeah, passing the 600 boxes, one hot bandit looms up to Plum Tucker and pulls up. So and that <laughs> pretty much leads to Phase Magic being somewhat gifted a group two race there yeah. with 10 meters Stephen to go. Bradbury. Practically, yeah. With 10 meters to go, she was fourth and she was probably hoping to maybe run third and get past Plum Tucker, but One Hot Bandit um, had his mind on other things. Um, he gets 30 days on the sideline, yeah? Well, he has to um, pass a satisfactory trial. So. Him and Joseph Sueli, they're both out for a while. <laughs> yeah, they're both out for a little bit. So, no, nah, he'll be fine. He, he's never shown any um, – he's never shown he'd do that in the past. So, he'll probably trial at Albion Park on Thursday night, and if he gets the green light from the stewards up there, I'm sure they'll be watching him very closely to see if he doesn't um, knock anyone's head off or do anything silly. Um, and then he'll be back, hopefully – for a Brisbane Cup tilt. Yes, and Phase Magic is going around in the origin distance on Thursday night, isn't it? I can't wait to see her back up at the 700 metres. Mm. I think she could potentially be the best 700 metre dog in Queensland. Ooh, That's wow. a big, big statement. But, geez, she is running home so strong, um, both visually and sectionally. And her only run at the 700 metres, she did it from the front, broke 16 early, went run 42.10. Um, I think she can break 42 seconds. And if you're doing that on the bunny, you, you're really hard to run down. Fantastic. Right, let's keep moving to the big one, the Group 1 Flying Amy Classic, 520 metres. And we're looking for Uncle Tommy out of the checks. We are, but uh, pre-race, his WA counterpart there, Sunset Fraser in box six. He was steamrolled in betting, $6 in the 3.30. And unfortunately, if you backed him, your ticket was confetti. He missed the start once again, but, but credit to him. He, he's, he's got crazy chase, this dog. He just, just barnstorms his way, pushes every dog out of the way and lobs in the second. But... Uncle Tommy, he was the only dog that uh, avoided all the collisions. There was about half a dozen dogs in behind him that got checked and probably should have won the race. Lakeview Emily in box eight, she was a sick watch. Hashino in box one, he was a sick watch. He found a really nice position. But um, he's a dual group one winner now, um, Uncle Tommy. And it's another example of 
not having to be the fastest dog in the race to win it. He has very faultless box manners. Mm -hmm. He has good acceleration for the first turn. Um, he hasn't lit the clock up in either of his starts at Albion Park, but right place, right time, and he's a dual Group 1 winner. Another Group 1 winner for Tommy Shelby. Very good. All right, let's keep rolling. It's time to talk Origin. The big night is nearly here. And uh, there's a little bit of a highlights of what we can look forward to. So we've got a couple of nice preludes for the Brisbane Cup as well, just to warm us up. And then we move into the three big ones, the Origin Distance, the Origin Sprint, and the Origin Match Race. Why don't we start by talking about the Origin Distance? There's a nice graphic here that we ripped off Racing Queensland's Twitter site. Um, you've got all the odds there as well. Completely dominated. Palawa King, Val Policella. We've sort of spoken quite a lot about both those dogs because obviously tip, yes. you're tipping is one of your Thursday set tips. Val Policella, Fast Milkman backs up. Pushti Bok backs up. Spoke a little bit about phase magic. What else can you add in, mate? Yeah, well, first things first for every race, we must look at the speed map. And the speed factors here look to come down low from phase magic and box one, stepping back up to the 710 metres. Think she'll be able to find the lead here. Mystical Beck, she's shown really good speed in recent weeks. She does want to use the track a little bit. Um, so that should just give phase magic a, a pretty clear run to the bunny. And fast milkman there in box eight. He'll be looking to cart his way across also. But um, once again, Clash of the Titans, Val Pole versus Palawa King. I'm not sure how many encounters the two have had, but um, it's it's relatively even. I know Palawa King won the Association Cup. Val Policella won the 715. Um, and I think she also won the Zoom Top or something like that down at the Meadows. So um, I think she might slightly be in front of him here. But I think he can... Um, even the tables here, as already mentioned in one of my tips for Thursday night. Just that he's got to get a lovely run here. As mentioned, Phase Magic should lead the race. Mystical Beck, she should push forward. Ritza Piper, we've seen her in the past um, go forward. So I think Palawa King will just lob um, probably fifth or sixth behind him and just rail, rail, rail. Whereas Val Policella, um, she's got to have a really hard time of getting around Fast Milkman. Uh, I think she's just, that's, that's her now. You're just going to have to pace mm -hmm. her off wanting to run to the outside of Greyhounds and Fast Milkman he has a really good turn of speed going um, past those 600 metre boxes. So um, I think across the whole series, Queensland probably have the better team, but the New South Wales dogs are just, they just map perfectly. So okay. um, I, I've got New South Wales winning the whole series. Yes, we'll see that, your prediction soon, yeah. Yes. All right, let's move to the Origin Sprint. Yes, plenty of quick beginners in this race, but it's hard to nail a leader. Uh, every dog... Barring Cluster and Zipping Megatron could lead this race um, if they were to Shanghai out. Queensland have drawn awfully here with Cluster in box one, uh, wanting box eight. Bears Bullet in box seven. Um, she wants to get back to the rails, so she definitely want to be uh, um, drawn much lower. Uh, and the, the poor thing here is for Queensland, she's drawn um, right outside All Natural, who wants to use the track a little bit, and, and Magistrate, um, he might be worse for, for Bears Bullet. So with all this said and done, um, I think Zipping Megatron, the favourite here, he's got to get a lovely run. Um, we just need him to miss the start like he did last week. He missed the start last week. Um, he got underneath the likes of I'm Peaking and, and he ran off the track. Zipping Megatron got the, the rails run. I think he ran 29.69. Mm -hmm. uh, run home really strongly. Um, I, I think it's between him and Good Odds Cobber in this race. I think the, the New South Wales dogs could not have drawn any better if they've tried. The problem with Good Odds Cobber is I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get across from box eight, even though he loves box eight. He's won... Six of his seven starts from the pink rug, but uh, there's just a little bit more speed engaged here than his race last week. So I'm siding with New South Wales to take out the Origin Sprint and Zipping Megatron to do so. All right. The biggest race of the night, in my opinion, the match race, the Origin match race. Love this. For Kenny vs. JSJ, the bookies are basically saying there's very little between them. Talk to us, mate. Well, for me, I love match racing. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's the one thing that sets apart greyhound racing from horse racing. It's mm -hmm. the one advantage that greyhound racing has uh, against horse racing and I'm a little bit um, unsure as to why we don't see more match racing yeah. because it's a, it's a thrilling spectacle. You've got two of the best uh, athletes, canine athletes going head to head, mm. uh, hitting speeds at well in excess of 70 kilometers per hour. And it's uh, another cracking race here. We've got the golden Easter egg winner um, for 2024, McKenna representing New South Wales and Jay is Jay for Queensland. Um, he won the million dollar chase last year. Uh, arguably he could be the best sprinter in Australia. We see him return from a three-month break here. Uh, as mentioned in the, the tip reel uh, once again, I think McKenna, she's just racing a little bit below her best. I don't have any concerns in her necessarily. I think she'll improve. Like, she's going to get every reason to. She's, it's a, it's a two-dog race. She's drawn box one. Um, there's a space in box two. Like, she's got to run to her best. But I just think Jay's Jay on his home track, 
track record holder. I'm pretty sure he's won, I think, 18 of his 29 starts here. He's four from four um, in fields with four dogs or less. He's two from two in match races. Yeah, it looks a bit of a silly price, to be honest with you. They opened McKenna favourite, and um, I had some say with that. I quickly slammed Jay's J. And I think he potentially starts around that 160, 150 mm. mark with McKenna starting well and truly in the black. Fantastic. All right, let's talk about how you can get involved in all this. So we've got a live stream, as you can see up there on the screen. We do a live stream on Thursday night. We're really excited about it. We're going to put a lot of work into it because we want it to be a super entertaining experience for you and hopefully a money-making experience as well. So I think we're going to kick off 7.40 p.m. We'll roll through till about 9.20 p.m. or something like that. And I think by doing that, we're going to cover the three big races. We'll also cover the couple of Brisbane Cup preludes. But you can see the King Zone's going to come in. Dream Team will come in as well. You're our quarterback. And then you've got me and Trell Mid as well. I think Uncle Mal will be in here as well. Yep. So it should be a really fun night. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot more to say about none of that, but please come and join in. We'll make sure that you have a really good set of tips beforehand. We'll get a all little of your... birdie one, told me um, Dream Team Matt and King Zone have gone out there and they've they asked, they're, they're, they're they're, asked they're, their connections yeah, for some tips, they race have, to race. They're pushing, and, their, um, they're pushing their contacts far and wide <laughs> to try and get the best possible dog set um, because King Zone, he didn't have a very good experience when we did the no. Saturday session for the Easter egg. He came in here unprepared and he lost his money. And I told him that he doesn't have to come in and bet. He said, there's no chance of me coming in and not betting. <laughs> um, so he's got to prepare himself better because if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Moving on from that. So on July the 4th, we're putting together a bit of a punt party. You can see it up on the screen there. Me and some of the other boys are going to be on track for the night. We're really looking forward to it. We put a shout out last week and a few people contacted me and said that they're going to come along, which I really appreciated. Huge result. I'm going to talk with the Brisbane Greyhound Racing Club this week to work out exactly, put the final touches on it, work out what we can do to you know put together as as good an experience for anyone wants to come out. Um, it'd be great if we could get like 50 or 60 of us and, and all have a great time. So by this time next week, I'll give you final details. But in the meantime, if you do want to come along, hit me up with my email. I think it's in the, uh, I'll put it in the description. You can also hit me up in pack chat. Um, They'd be crazy not to come. It'd be a great night. I've only been a part of the Wolf Den for the last year or so, but I've enjoyed experiences such as Million Dollar Chase we went to, with yep. Straight Bat Bowman and all the boys. <laughs> Hudson Hotel was a huge day. I'm that sure we fun. can put some footage of that up there. That was yeah. a huge day. True. Over 100 True. people in the pub all cheering home winners. Yep. Um, and, yeah, one of the biggest nights of racing across the entire Greyhound calendar. If you're not, if you're in Queensland, you yeah, best be The only down. excuse is geography. If you're in Melbourne or Perth, okay, yeah. maybe I understand. But if you're in Brisbane, like, you just got to be there. Middle of so. winter. Like, what else is there yeah, to do? That's right. No one's so. on holidays, so get down there. All right. Great stuff. We're really looking forward to Thursday night. Up the Dan, thank you for the support. See you on Thursday night.